All right, everybody, welcome back into Cherry Picking Week 22, the fantasy hockey season. This week after week, we get closer to the NHL playoffs, but also the end of the fantasy hockey season, which is obviously a little bit sad. But must add, this week, I've got three players. Two of them are, are less than 5% rostered, um, and then one guy is, is my pri priority add this week um, for the next six days. And then there's also a couple other guys that have our, uh, our honorable mentions as well, but mainly for people that are in not as deep leagues, like the 10 to 12 man leagues, these guys will be more available. But with, with the NHL regular season winding down and your fantasy hockey seasons coming in to an end here, there are other ways and avenues to bet on your favorite teams and players. BetMGM, one of the more user-friendly sportsbooks there is, offer a ton of NHL betting options as well, from same-game parlays to betting on player props like shots on goal, uh, goal scores, block shots, and even more. Bruins fans too, you guys are in luck because Massachusetts online sports betting just launched Friday, March 10th. MGM has a can miss offer for people in Massachusetts and people in all legal sports betting states. Click the link in our description, get a $1,000 first bet offer when you sign up with promo code owner's box. Yeah, pretty much $1,000 essentially on the house. All right, let's get right into the video here. All right, so the first guy that we're going to be picking up, Barrett Hayton. He is my highest priority ad this week on the Arizona Coyotes. He, he's 14% rostered, but that number is just continuing to increase, especially in Yahoo Fantasy League right now. So for one, he plays three times this week. He has two great matchups against Vancouver and Chicago. He does have to play the Calgary Flames tonight, but this guy has been the Coyotes' entire offense, along with Clayton Keller over the last month and for the good part of the season as well. Hayden plays on that first power play line and that first line with Clayton Keller. He's managed eight points in his last four games, including a four-point outing in their most recent game against Minnesota, where he had two goals and two assists. And over his last 10 games played, he has five goals, 11 points, averaging almost three shots on goal per game, and leads the team in expected goals for and high danger chances. So really at this point, the only four that plays more consistently in minutes than Barrett Hayden is Clayton Keller and they're pretty much on the ice all the time together and have built up a really solid chemistry on that first line and first power play line and the Coyotes offense continues to pride themselves off a, a very efficient offense and I say that in the sense that they have a low shot volume but they continue to have a very high shooting percentage um, this isn't the first 10 game stretch and I'm talking about right now where they've led the NHL in shooting percentage right now they have a 12% shooting percentage is just a little bit higher than the Colorado Avalanche over the last two to three weeks so I don't think we'll really see any regression either because Hayton and Keller all are the volume on this team. If anything, you know, there's guys like, or Nick Bukestad used to be on the team, but Lawson Krause, those guys, very low volume who score in a lot, a high percentage of their shots. But that's not sustainable. Barrett Hayden and obviously Clayton Keller are two guys that you can definitely trust in fantasy hockey. Barrett Hayden being the guy that's only 40% rostered, you just have to pick him up this week. Okay, so this is definitely a PSA to pick up Trevor Van Riemsdyk this week because he's only 4% rostered, but... The bigger story here is that the Capitals play four games this week and two of those matchups being against Buffalo and the Blues who've been giving up a lot of shots, a lot of offensive opportunities. So there are definitely some other players on the Capitals that I'll mention at the end um, of this Trevor Van Riemdijk kind of spiel here. So he's been solid. You know, this defensive depth on this team has really gone south uh, since the trade deadline. You know, Carlson's hurt right now, but Orlov and Gustafson got moved. So now Van Riemsdyk is the first E pair with Rasmus Sandin, who came in in the Gustafson trade from Toronto, who's also a guy I would pick up, but he's like 50% rostered. So if you're in um, definitely a, a deeper league, Van Riemsdyk is a, is a great option right now. One crazy thing to know that has really surprised me when I was digging into some research on Van Riemsdyk, second in shots on goal on the team over the last 10 games played, only behind Ovi by three. He has 28, Ovechkin has 31. That's in all situations, like including the power play as well. He has five points in his last 10 games, including a goal and a two-point outing in his most recent game against the Islanders, where they did win 5-1. His ice time, too, has also significantly increased recently. He played 23 minutes against the Isles and almost 28 minutes against the Devils. They did lose that game, but we've seen him consistently play 21-plus minutes now for, for the last two weeks, which is awesome to see. Uh, his contributions also haven't just increased on the offensive side of the ice. His block shots are really starting to tally up here. Um, he had 26 over the last over the last 10 games, which leads the Capitals, and then he's almost at 150 for the season, 148 blocks this year. So if you're in a bangers league, that's definitely really important to note. If you need a D at 4% rostered, this guy has to be on the top of your priority list. Um, he's on the top of mine. I've already picked him up. And then, you know, the Caps... All, some of these forwards, because the Caps weren't playing well for a decent amount of time, are, aren't are that high rostered in Yahoo leagues right now. Like 
Oshi and Strom are less than 30% rostered, I think, in, in Yahoo League. So those are two guys that have great matchups moving forward, and they're starting. The teams are getting a little bit healthier. Uh, they're probably not going to make the playoffs, but still, they're not just going to stop scoring. So Oshi and Strom have been playing well, and then Gustafson's definitely a guy uh, that you need to pick up if you need a defenseman. All right, so the last guy that we're going to be looking to pick up, definitely more meant for the guys that are in deeper leagues and a guy who's also annoyed probably a lot of fantasy owners at the beginning of the season and was dropped in a lot of leagues, and that's Nate Schmidt on the Winnipeg Jets. He's 1% rostered, but a very solid defensive ad this week if you need one. He's been playing much better as of late. We're starting to see this offensive defenseman that we saw in Vegas, you know, have have successful times in Vegas. He has four points in his last four games, including two goals and his ice time starting to increase here, playing 20-plus minutes in his last two contests as well. I know Morrissey was out last game and got hurt the game before, but even with him back in the lineup, I'm confident Schmidt's ice time will still stay around 19 to 20 minutes. You know, Rick Bonus gave him an opportunity when Morrissey was out for that small stretch, and he took advantage of it. And Rick Bonus loves his offensive defenseman, so I think that Schmidt's leash might get extended a little bit longer here as he continues to be effective on the ice. The Jets also play four games this week. Two of those are against Carolina and Boston. But regardless, if Schmidt doesn't score, uh, you know, he's he has enough volume and plays enough minutes, he can muster up a solid fantasy hockey night uh, through hits, blocks, and, and even shots on goal as well. So at 1% rostered, he's definitely a guy I think you could pick up. Definitely worth it. And lastly, just two honorable mentions for you guys that are not in as deep leagues. Um, Gabriel Velarde is starting to play a lot better. He's 18% rostered. Um, he's back on that first power play line, but he's still playing on the third line. And then Jason Zucker as well, as the Pens push for the playoffs, they're going to need all the help they can get, and he's continuing to to show that on the offense today. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you thought of this week's must-ads. Be sure to check out that link in the description to sign up at BetMGM if you haven't already. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.